What's up, guys? Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys our week five team builder for ABL, taking on Ant Man and the Blitz of Berlin. His team consists of Z Tornadus, Therian, Tangrowth, Primarina, Jolteon, Mesprit, Mismegius, uh, Flareon, Mega Tyranitar, Z Garchomp, Toxicroak, Durant, and Z Togedemaru. Priority users in the Toxicroak with Sucker Punch and Vacuum Wave, as well as Togedemaru with Fake Out. Hazard setting in the Mesprit with Rocks, Mega Tyranitar with Rocks, and Garchomp with Rocks. Uh, removal options is just the Tornadus with Defog. Uh, and this is a team that's not overly hurt by Stealth Rocks, but it's still really good chip. Um, and Hazards, just in general, uh, chip this team down pretty significantly. Um, there are a couple Levitate users in the Mesprit and the Mesmagius, but um, something to keep in mind is that we would break something like a Sturdy on the Togodomaru, perhaps, or Rocks would just cripple the Flareon and the Torn. Uh, the Torn, every time it comes in, basically, Regen is doing a lot less for it. Four times weaknesses include the Mega Tyranitar to Fighting. Garchomp to Ice, Toxicroak to Psychic, Durant to Fire, and Togedemaru to Ground. Uh, so there's a few there at the on the back half of the team, and I'm not really expecting Flareon, Durant, or Togedemaru. Um, I don't think they make all that much sense. Togedemaru in the sense that I've got Double Ground, as well as a Megazard X. Um, it, it doesn't pressure all that much besides a Deancey on my team which Tangrowth and Primarina potentially pressure a little bit better. Same with Durant, uh, pressuring that a little bit better as well. Um, Durant, I'm not really expecting because I have a Megazard X, um, although it's definitely a solid way to break through my Grass types and my Sloking, as well as my Alolan Persian, so I wouldn't be surprised if it showed up, but I'm not really expecting it. Flareon is another sort of thing where it's like, well, okay, so I have Triple Grass. Am I bringing some for the uh, for the Chomp or not? And where, where does it go from there? Uh, Toxicroak is something I could see not coming as well. Obviously, I have Triple Grass, so the Mons that are good against Triple Grass and whatnot, I think, are, 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 a, are a viable strat there. I definitely think Tornadus, Jolteon, Tangrowth are all coming 100% of the time. Because they can do that, they pick on the waters and the grasses on my teams. Uh, I think Garchomp is coming, and it's going to be Scarf Chomp to be able to revenge kill my Mega Charizard X at plus one. So those four, I think, are 100% coming. And this is kind of the downside of having 12 Mon, um, 12 mon format. And I really hate prepping with and for 12 Mons. Um, it, it's just really annoying. If I didn't have to be... If I wasn't forced into picking 12 Mons, it would be a lot more enjoyable for me. But unfortunately, it doesn't end up working out that way. Um, the Mega Tyranitar is something that definitely could come, especially to beat the Sloking, but I'm not overly anticipating it to be the main factor uh, on the team. It's also a decent way to break through Gorgeist. I just think that Keldeo kind of checks it um, a little bit too much um, for, for his liking. So that's kind of my thoughts on, on those. Everything else is sort of I'm on, I'm a middle ground on. Uh, I think the Primarina is definitely a solid wall breaker that I don't have good answers to. So uh, there's a couple things I'm doing in regards to that. Mainly the Ferrothorn being Aukaberry. I can sort of pressure that a bit. So let's go over to my team here and see what we're working with here. I'm an Aukaberry Ferrothorn, not necessarily for the Flareon, but just for random fire coverage on the team, uh, like a Fire Punch T-Tar and whatnot. Um, I'm running Power Whip over anything else so that I can break the Primarina with a Power Whip. Hopefully I don't miss. I've had a ha habit of missing this week. Uh, that match with Shuckle King that you guys, excuse me, that you guys saw last week was the same week as this. Uh, that one got extended. So I, I missed uh, in that, and then I missed a bunch in my Nepple match as well. Um, I'm running Spikes on the Ferrothorn. I have a triple Spikes team, and I haven't abused it all that much up to this point. We're half, like, this is the halfway point of the season, so it'd be nice to, like, actually use some Spikes, <laughs> considering I have triple Spikes. Uh, and Spikes really pressure everything that isn't Torn, Mesprit, or Mismagius. Um, a little bit more than Rocks do against Mons like the Garchomp and the Mega Titar. Specifically the Garchomp, though. Knockoff gets rid of some pretty crucial items here, especially on the Mismagius and the Mesprit. It's pretty crucial there. Uh, and then Toxic just punishes the entire team except for Toxicroak, uh, which is definitely a solid way to deal with Ferrothorn. Uh, sorry, and the Durant and the Togedemaru, but getting rid of their items is really clutch. Just a mixed defensive spread with Akaberry so that I can live in HP Fire from the Primarina and Power Whip it back. Um, again, Spikes really pressure this team, and Tornadus being the only... Defogger, I don't anticipate it to be Assault Vest. Uh, I think Assault Vest is maybe the best set that it has to deal with Keldeo. Otherwise, this team reasonably struggles with Keldeo. Tangrowth might have to be the Keldeo check. 
Um, I'm not even bringing Keldeo, obviously. Uh, Primarina is also a decent Keldeo check as a Solfest user, but uh, something does have to be a Solfest for that. DNC's next. I'm an offensive DNC, double dance DNC with Rock Polish, Calm Mind, Moonblast, Earth Power. So Earth Power is there for the Togo Tomorrow and the Durant. Durant is basically a piece of paper on the special side, so um, I don't need like HP Fire or whatever. I'd rather have Earth Power to punish the Togo Tomorrow and the Durant a little bit harder. Uh, and then Moonblast just rips through everything else honestly uh, I, I don't need rock stab either because earth power deals with the uh, deals with the flareon a potential flareon as well not that i think the flareon can touch me all that much because i don't believe uh, it gets steel coverage but outside of like iron tail so it might be able to iron tail me but i really solid defense because i'm regular deancy basically if i can get the speed boost and i can get the com uh, a calm mind up then i'm sitting pretty against most of this team bar the permarina permarina does need to be fairly weakened I'm outspeeding Jolteon at plus two, which is the fastest mod on his team, so that's really solid. And then max HP, a little bit of whatever was left, I just put into special attack, so it makes it easier for me to sweep. I'm a Life Orb Nido King with rocks, so this is my rock setter. Rocks are pretty valuable, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to hopefully get um, rocks plus one layer, one, at least one layer of spike up against this team to be able to punish a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Sludge Wave is there mainly for the Tangrowth and the Primarina. I can't outright switch into them, but Nidoking is a gigantic threat against everything on his team offensively. Earth Power is pretty much only there for the Jolteon, but it pressures the Toga tomorrow as well. And then I've got Ice Beam there for the Chomp uh, over Flamethrower, which I think is fairly unnecessary. Um, it doesn't really benefit me all that much to have Flamethrower over Ice Beam. <laughs> I'd rather just be able to knock out the Chomp if, if it comes down to that and he makes a, makes a read thinking that I'm going to go into Zapdos or Charizard or whatever pre-mega on the Earthquake or whatever, and clicks like Dragon Claw, then I can live and uh, and kill it with an Ice Beam. So I'm max speed to speed tie with something... Toxic Croak, I'm speed tying Toxic Croak, uh, and then max speed, a little bit of H, uh, defense, sorry. Um, Zapdos, I was originally going to be offensive, and then I wanted like four attacks, or I wanted a pivoting move, but I couldn't really afford to be a pivoting move, so I'm Heat Wave HPS, T-Bolt Roost. Uh, T-Bolt is there for the Primarina, punishes that. Uh, he does have a couple of electric immunities, three electric immunities actually. It's for, it's mainly, T-Bolt's mainly there for the Torn, uh, but Jolteon's a threat for that, Togedemaru's a threat for that, and Garchomp's a threat for that, so, uh, Heat Wave covers the Togedemaru, and reasonably what I would hit the Jolteon with. It's the hardest hitting move I have to hit Jolteon. Um, and then HP Ice is there for the Chomp. Heat Wave is also a nice way to break through a Tangrowth. Um, and it's also a nice way to break through a Mesprit or a Miss Magius. Combine Mesprit actually might be a gigantic problem for this team, so we'll sort of see about that. Uh, I'm not bringing Toxic on anything to my knowledge, and so that makes things a little bit sketchy. A little bit sketchy. I'm running enough speed on here for Togi tomorrow, and then max HP, a little bit of special attack. Obama Snow, I'm bringing a Scarf Obama Snow. Obama Snow kind of has a lot of good offensive matchups, and I'm using it a lot more than I probably should. Um, oh, I do have an update for you guys about a drop that I made that'll be active week six, so I'll talk about that probably when I'm running through the mods that I'm not bringing. I'll talk about that because it's one of the mods I'm not bringing. Uh, Blizzard, Woodhammer, Ice Punch, Earthquake. I'd rather be Ice Punch than. Uh, anything else? Um, just because I think Ice Punch pressures physically, it pressures the Tornadus a little bit better anyways, and it's a nice way to hit the Mesprit and the Tyranitar. This is probably going to be my Revenge Killer for mostly everything. Um, with the speed investment I have, I tie Primarina, so I'll tie a Scarf Primarina. I'm not sure what that ends up being in terms of what I can actually have speed um, naturally. Let me just calc it really quickly here. Uh, I hit 360, so I'm actually one point lower than my Alolan Persian, so I won't be able to outspeed the Tornadus or the Jolteon, but I'll outspeed everything else, uh, as long as they aren't Scarfed. <clears throat> I didn't think it was worthwhile to run Ice Shard this game if I'm going to be Scarfed anyways. Um, even if I think that the Garchomp is going to be Scarfed, I don't really see it locking itself into Fire Fang against me when I have a Deancey, so that's kind of where my head's at with that. Uh, Earthquake is just there to deal with the Togedemaru, and the Flareon, if they really want to switch in on me, then I've got Earthquake. It's pretty irrelevant. I hope that I don't ever have to click Earthquake. Uh, I would much rather be clicking either Ice Punch or Woodhammer most of the game. But if I have to click Blizzard as well, that's definitely an option. Uh, Blizzard will hit things a little bit harder. If it's physically defensive tank growth, I'd rather click Blizzard. That's why I'm maxed attack and only a tiny bit of special attack, uh, and that's why I'm na why sorry why I'm naive is because I was anticipating I would outspeed Tornadus, but I obviously don't. Um, 
but it's a little bit better for me to switch into a Garchomp Earthquake. If if I have to switch into Gar Garchomp's Earthquake, I will, kind of thing. Uh, this is a nice way to kill the Primarina as well, which I mentioned is a gigantic problem for the Deancey. So taking out the problems for Deancey is a little bit more important to me than dealing with anything else. Uh, my Jolteon check is, check in quotations, is Nidoking. Realistically, it's the Ferrothorn. If he wants to run... Um, HP fire, then he's looking like he's going to get hardwalled by Diggersby, and so that would be an interesting set. I don't, I don't know if I would agree with that. Last but not least is Zardex. I'm running a very bulky Zardex spread. This is extremely bulky. I will not be revenge killed by a Garchomp from full. I live in Earthquake from Scarf Chomp from full. I live in Outrage from Scarf Chomp from full with this investment, and I can get a Will-O-Wisp buff on it. If I can just spread burn to the Megatar and the Garchomp, um, then not a lot can take this down. I've got Roost, Thunder Punch, and Dragon Claw. This is pretty much perfect coverage for everything, bar like a Togedemaru, but I could definitely just stall that out with Will-O-Wisp plus Dragon Claw. Uh, same with Durant, I could just Will-O-Wisp it and, and move on with my life kind of thing. Um, that's the status I'm running. Rather than Toxic, I'd rather burn the Mons that are meant to revenge kill my Zardex. And so being a much bulkier Zardex, this is going to be a prime opportunity for me to just spread Will-O-Wisps and just sit in on some physical attackers for a while, despite them being able to hit me super effectively. Uh, like I mentioned, Thunder Punch is there. Uh, it's actually only there for the Primarina. <laughs> uh, I would probably rather have like Flare Blitz or Fire Punch for the rest of the team, but this is fine because Dragon Claw hits everything else uh, bar the Primarina anyways, except for the Togedemaru, which again, I don't really expect. Um, and if it does come, I've got Earthquake on Obama Snow, Heat Wave on Zapdos, Earth Power on... Um, on Nido King and Earth Power on DNC, so I've got plenty of coverage for it. Uh, this spread is designed mainly to take a hit from Garchomp. So that's the team. In terms of what I'm not bringing here, Slow King didn't come uh, because of Tangrowth and the Jolteon. Like I mentioned, they really pressure my water types quite a lot, and that's why you don't see a single water type on my team this week. Um, it's just... <sighs> I could bring a water type. The Primarin is probably going to have Energy Ball for it anyways, just in case. Uh, but it doesn't make all that much sense for me to do that when I could bring grass types that more reliably check uh, the other mods. Excuse me. And I'm a lot less scared of something like a Flareon than I am of Jolteon. Persian, I was also considering bringing as just a pivot option, um, but I'm not really bringing the setup this week. So, Or sorry, I'm bringing the TNT. So I wanted to bring uh, Persian as... Uh, set up support for my Deancey, but I ended up avoiding that entirely, and I just went with a, a completely different route. Um, Kelio is a solid bring, but like I mentioned, I think he definitely has to bring at least one Assault Vest user, uh, or like a really spidef Mesprit, and so like all of those combined sort of threaten me a little bit, and I think that Toxicroak might actually show up potentially as a Kelio check. Uh, Diggersby, I didn't really consider bringing this game. It's not super great with double levitate and a flying type, just spamming Earthquake all over the place, and Tangrowth is a pretty reliable check to it. A Scarf Diggersby could have been alright, a Setup Diggersby also would have been alright, but I'm just not sure that I could have put it in a position to win. Uh, Gorgeist I'm not bringing, and Gorgeist is actually the one I'm dropping. Uh, effective week 6, I will not have Gorgeist and I'll have Zatu on the team. Gorgeist wasn't really offering me much, it kind of loses to Mega Tyranitar, although it can beat something like a Garchomp. And I wanted something to be able to maybe pressure Hazard Setters a little bit more in terms of the Zatu. Obviously, Zatu doesn't really bring much against the Hazard Setters in this game, especially considering Mega Titar's uh, primary rocker on this team. Um, but at least sort of deterring rocks against my Obama Snow, Zapdos, Zard, which have been coming very consistently, uh, is, is pretty nice for me. There, uh, There's not a lot of room, and this is another qualm I have with being forced to draft 12 Pokemon. Uh, draft, not even... Like, forcing people to draft 12 is just where I... There, there isn't a lot on the board. And it sort of means you want to trade with people, but there's only 10 weeks. So, like, you don't want to trade with people at the same time. It, it's really strange. Uh, I just... Uh, I can't pinpoint it. But there wasn't enough that I could drop from the main core of the team to improve it. Uh, so I had to drop a tier 5 free, <laughs> tier 5 free pick, which is like, is this really what I want to do? But I needed to clean up the uh, the five, um, five grass types a little bit. And so picking up another flying type isn't horrible. It's a nice earthquake immunity. Uh, not that I was low on ground resists, but 
Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So, uh, yeah, and then last but not least, Glycopod. I also consider Glycopod because uh, it's a nice way to deal with Tangrowth. It's an effective revenge killer against Mesprit and the Tyranitar. Um, also an effective revenge killer against the Jolteon, surprisingly enough, but uh, it's just wasn't a solid bring here for me so that's kind of where the team is at so uh hopefully you guys enjoy we again we take on ant-man in the blitz of berlin and i'll catch you guys for the match